everyone and welcome to tvOS 14 beta 8. So the install I've already done for this particular beta version. The install I believe may have actually come out yesterday so today is actually Thursday the 10th and this one I've actually updated both both my Apple TVs when I've come home today. So as we can see, I just grabbed the remote. So the TVS version is 14.0 and the build number is 18J5385A. And what we'll do is we'll just come out of that and we'll briefly discuss a few things. So firstly, we'll take a look at YouTube and we'll take a look at uh, some 4K videos. So I know all of my videos are in 4K. So we'll click on this one and we'll just come across and i already know this but basically there's still no option showing for 4k so unfortunately my tv is still sh only well my apple tv is still only showing 1080p no 4k option is actually showing so unfortunately that side of things um, as i said in a previous video i think this may actually just be an update that's required um, at the moment obviously very few apps have actually been updated. So these are the only ones that have actually had updates recently. So possibly that could simply be for the 4K playback as well as picture in picture. That may also be something that requires an update for it. So other than that, I've not really noticed many anything, anything else. Speed wise, it seems about the same to be perfectly honest. When I first updated the my other Apple TV, I did notice that after I actually, well, after the Apple TV itself restarted, it did freeze up a little. I think that may have literally just been a little bug just as the update happened, um, gave it a quick restart and since then it's been fine. With this particular one, similar thing. This one, I've never really had any um, issues with regards to playback or anything like that. So I'm not expecting anything um, drastically different to be uh, happening on this version either. Now. Let's come across to the HomeKit side of things and unfortunately once again uh, it does look like all of these sort of um, this whole section if you like of um, a mini HomeKit or a mini home app unfortunately it looks at the moment like it's it's going to be staying with just scenes and it's not giving device access so I, I really as I said I think Apple are missing a trick by not having, um, similar to what you get on iOS 14, where even in the control center, you can, you've got a little home icon that, and if you click on that, it does actually give you a list of every single item that you basically have listed. So every device, every sensor, every um, switch, every light switch, all your cameras, everything. Um, obviously we've got the cameras section at the top, which is pretty much necessary for one of the features that they actually tried to push, which is the cameras and the doorbe doorbell um, integration with tvOS 14. But on this, just on this section here, I would really like it if by the time the public release comes out that they do give us access to all of our devices and it'd be so good to be able to just quickly turn on either lights or turn off lights or turn on heating. Like obviously here I've got a few, um, I have a few scenes saved for various temperatures. Um, if you just look in the bottom right hand corner, I think you can just about see my thermostat there. So if, for example, if I click this one, you'll notice, you may be able to notice it. It just comes on and then when I click that one, it goes back off again. Um, it might be a little difficult for you to see just, just down there. But other than that, basically, I I just like device access for ev all of my devices in here. I think that's something that would really improve the, the experience of using the Apple TV because you've literally, it, it, it becomes the hub. I mean, the, the Apple TV works as a hub anyway, so it doesn't make sense not to give it access to basically access every single device available in your HomeKit setup essentially. So now what we'll do is we'll come on to the camera side of things. As you can see, if we just click into it, that one's already live. So we'll click into the next one. These are both battery powered cameras. So basically they do take a few seconds to actually boot up. The back garden one, as you've probably seen in some of the, the recent videos, some of the, the cameras, depending on how long you actually leave that active for, 
um, sometimes they can be a little slow to actually respond but also um, have I have also noticed a slight issue with um, this interface as well so it's not quite perfect um, first thing is your naming so I did actually do a test where basically I've um, renamed something and I've, I've got a much longer name and what it does is it cuts off the end and similarly if you just look at where it says streaming that just says stream in and I think that is once again simply because of how it's been set up um, the length of the word is actually getting cut off simply by by whatever setup that they've actually installed in terms of how long a name they are actually allowing based in in this bottom section so what we'll do is we'll just click across into there we go so we have got the little live icon just in the bottom right hand there that shows that it is live and also your your clock is ticking over as well next we'll come over and you can see me these ones for some reason they seem to be a bit glitchy so these are actually indoor cameras and this is a 2k indoor cam you can just see my new rig there and what i've actually found is depending on how many devices you have set up sometimes it will work in this room and sometimes it will work in the other room but for some reason um, they don't seem to be working in both as you can see this is now working showing the living room but the front room which is uh, the room I'm in that one doesn't seem to be working whereas if I come across oh there we go so this one has now updated so that is also now live as well so both of them appear to be working as I say it is a little glitchy still with regards to the cameras just the way that um, it's pulling pulling it through but obviously having access to this here is is always helpful and as I say these these two normally what happens is before the window is actually transitioned in the video is already live so as you'll see this this is already live and it'll be the same thing as you can see my arm moving there it's it's live straight away and with these battery camera ones obviously it takes a few seconds for the camera to actually wake up and then obviously the video then kicks in which is essentially what I want. But what I would like to see is, as I've said in, in a previous video, I would like them to add some sort of a, an app where it gives us access to all of our cameras all at once. So in a grid formation or something like that, or give us, give us the home, a home app, um, an actual home app on here. I mean, they, they've kind of done it with this, this integration here. And similarly, as, I've, as I mentioned, the way it works in uh, iOS 14, where you have the top nine, if you like, in your control center, where when you when you click on it, it will give you your, your main top nine. That's obviously been changed now to where it's it's adaptive. So it kind of figures out what the last device you used was and it, it presents that. So I'd like something similar to when you actually click the home icon on that screen, where it literally gives you a drop down of all of your devices. So down here, I'd like to see all my devices, um, possibly a similar thing as I mentioned before. On the phones, what it does is just at the top, it'll give you a brief summary of your house. So it'll tell you temperatures, it'll tell you if any windows are open, any switches are on, any fans are on, all that kind of thing, a summary right at the top. And then um, it gives you your switches and then down at the bottom, it gives you your cameras. Obviously with this interface, I think it's better to have the cameras at the top, but I would also like to see some sort of little summary here and then all your devices below or at least give us an option where you've got this kind of icon where you can just click on that and then it will expand and basically give you more options other than that the little play about that I've had with it so far um, I've not noticed any difference speed wise it is probably about the same to be perfectly honest I mean it's not not a great dis uh, difference between what this is giving me right now and what I was getting before. That's mainly because it was actually quite good before and apart from the odd glitch here and there and it's it's generally to do with the, the screensaver kicking in and switching between various modes, the handshake the, um, between maybe Dolby Vision and SD or, or vice versa. That kind of thing is normally the only thing that tends to actually trip it out a little but other than that um, all, all good so far I have seen a few posts on reddit uh, claiming people have updated and they've had issues with certain apps and this is mainly streaming apps that I believe are available in America um, some of the these not the main four essentially so some of the other maybe smaller kind of streaming apps they're, they're perhaps not working 
with anything like that obviously you have to bear in mind and certain apps will work regardless because of the the core architecture so ios 13 and as with ios 12 they're very similar um so ios 14 as soon as i updated pretty much everything was still working netflix was the one app that still had that little bit of a glitch but it didn't stop it from actually functioning all you had to do was a, a basically a reset every time you left it idling for maybe a day or so but with any additional apps as with the youtube app and the 4k playback you have to bear in mind that you may need to wait for an update now the good thing is it looks like obviously with the apple event next week the 15th it looks like tvos possibly could be released by the end of that week or maybe the following week it's i mean it's already on to beta 8 so and from the ios side of things they've started adding a designation um, onto the end of it which normally means it's it's getting close to the the grandmaster release which is essentially the public release so barring any major hiccups so in terms of any big bugs or anything um that that would essentially be the final release which is a little disappointing because obviously bringing that round obviously it does also mean that this is probably all we're going to get as well so it probably means i'm going to end up having to create a lot more scenes of of basic automations that i i use quite often but as i say it's it's still a big improvement over ios 13 just all of the integration that it does have and as i say playback and everything is perfectly fine for me what i would say is if you do know of any issues that people have been having maybe you've updated and you've got an issue with a particular app then just post it down in the comments below i was also planning on doing a ios 14 beta 8 video please if you haven't already done so subscribe and hit the bell icon and you'll be notified once that drops Okay, so I just have a small edit. This part of the video, I only discovered it slightly after f finishing my Beta 8 review essentially. And it's basically just the integration of the cameras and an idea of what the doorbell would actually look like. So if I use Siri, and basically it can be on anything. So obviously right now it's on the screensaver. And if I activate Siri and say, show me the driveway. And as you can see, it pops in a little uh, window and whatever you've got playing in the background, as long as you don't click on the camera, it will stay playing in the background. Audio, I believe, stays on the main source uh, material as well. So whatever you've got playing, the audio from that will actually play back. Now, if I hit the TV icon, as it says, press TV for full screen, it will then go into full screen. And right now, as you can see, we don't have the dots at the bottom anymore. And also, if, if we just notice uh, with regards to the streaming just there, as you can see, it, it's actually saying the, the full streaming word. So this is essentially the integration that you're going to have. And the doorbell will look very similar. So rather than swiping in, it almost like pops in. So I'll just do that again. Show me the garden. And as you can see, it just pops in. And obviously both of these are uh, battery powered cameras so that they take a second or two to actually power up. And to exit out, you're literally just pressing the, uh, the menu button on your remote. Literally just pressing that. Show me the living room. And obviously, as, as I've mentioned, because that is a powered camera as opposed to being a battery powered camera, that loads instantly. And if I hit full screen, that basically loads up, it's live, it's basically there straight away. Just cancel out that. Show me the front room. And there we go. So once again, loads up straight away and is pretty much um, live straight away. So very little latency um, between my movements and what's, what's actually happening. Mm -hmm.